Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw. As you can tell, I'm wearing my Batman jacket because it's freaking cold right now! Anyways, today I am continuing the Mastodon discography with, of course, the 2009 release, the fourth studio album entitled Crack the Sky. As you can tell, the word sky in the album title is misspelled. Actually, it's not misspelled. It's actually a name of a person. Braun, a.k.a. the drummer, had a sister, and around her age of 14 years old, the person, Sky, committed suicide, his sister, and he's been dealing with it for 20-plus years. And I wanted to read a quote that he actually said about this incident, and basically saying that this album, Crack the Sky, is homage, a honor honoring of his sister. And I wanted to read this passage he actually wrote about it. And then I'll explain a little bit about how all of this little tidbit of information of how this album is kind of an homage to her kind of makes sense and how it kind of made me make more sense of this album while I was listening to it. My sister passed away when I was a teenager and it was awful. And there's no better way to pay tribute to a lost loved one than having an opportunity to be in a group with my friends and we make art together. Art, good word there. Her name was Sky. So Crack the Sky means a lot of different things. For me personally, it means the moment of being told you lost someone dear to you, that moment is enough to crack the sky. And I thought that was a very interesting uh, thing there, and I really liked that quote, and that kind of made sense to me. And after learning this, because I listened to the album Crack the Sky about five or six times before I discovered the meaning behind it, because I thought just the misspelling of the word sky was just some kind of thing they were just doing, but... I listened to the album and I felt like there was something there that kind of wasn't, it, it all wasn't clicking for me. I enjoyed the music, I loved the lyrical content, I just loved everything about this album, but something wasn't clicking. And when I was reading interviews of the guys talking about this release, there was no mention of the sky element of actually Braun's sister who committed suicide at age 14. There was talks of this album was being more focused, and we were talking about a certain element of the uh, ether. I think it's how you pronounce it, because they've already talked about other elements in previous albums, so they wanted to do another kind of concept idea. But I didn't see that part. And all these things they were talking about, how they were going to talk about this type of element and have this you know more focused album, which was all making sense, because it was I could definitely see that, because there was a lot of really interesting melodies, there was a lot of really great groovy parts, there was, you know, the progressive metal, the sludge metal, everything was fitting except for one thing, kind of this consistent idea that wasn't fitting until I learned about the actual backstory of the name of the album, the name of the album, and the fact that this album is kind of centered around Braun's sister who, who uh, committed suicide. So this kind of made me look at this album in a different way, because this album to me, just feels like it's it's more of an homage to someone. It's not necessarily the next Mastodon record. I mean, of course it is, but for me, it just felt like it was something a little bit more. It had, it had more deeper feelings. It had more emotion behind it. I could definitely tell that in the vocals. I could definitely tell that in the music, and that's something weird to see how you can say, it, I could feel more emotion in the music. It's kind of hard to kind of place that, but it's one of those moments where it's either you get it or you don't, or you interpret this album how you want to. But for me, before I learned this piece of information, I was taking this album as a very groove-driven, a very melodic-driven album that was kind of, that was it, was, it was either on the back burner or it was right in the front, and it was throughout this whole entire album. And, I kinda, and it kind of made sense learning this piece of information about that. Now, what I really like is that the actual links, the links... The album, the album, the song links, because I'm, you know, losing my train of thought here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyways, so another piece of information, I'm going to go through some of the tracks, some of my personal favorite tracks, and I'll talk a little bit about the actual links of the songs and basically talk a little bit about the, uh, how I felt about the tracks. So the first one we're going to start off with is actually track number one, Oblivion, which I felt like was a great opening track. It had this really eerie type of opening, and then Braun, the drummer, became the third official vocalist because he sang lead vocals on the track. And this track's only about 5 minutes and 46 seconds. It's not that long of a track, but it's really cool to see Braun's singing style and then hear the other guys as well coming in to kind of, you know, back and forth, back and forth type deal. So that was a really good track, I think, to open up this album to kind of give you kind of the idea of where this album's going to go. Of course, the song Oblivion in the open track doesn't give you everything this album's going to deliver, to you, but it kind of gives you a sense of where this album is going to be heading in certain directions, and of course, there's you know other turns where you don't expect it, but I think Oblivion kind of showcases 
what to expect and kind of you know what's going to happen because this song is definitely groove driven and melody driven and you could just kind of feel that this is how the album is going to represent and this is what it's going to give to you the listener so i felt that it was a very good opener for this album now continuing on the actual uh, quintessence is actually track number three five minutes and 27 seconds I like that track as well because it, it gives you some new things that you weren't expecting from the first two tracks. And I like the fact that there's a song called Quintessence. I think it's how you pronounce it. I'm pretty sure. And I really just liked how that track was like how all the song transitions were put together. And I liked how the guys just really uh, like put some really interesting musical parts in that track to keep it a little bit more interesting. So I really enjoyed that that track had a lot of good moments and it clocks in at five minutes and 27 seconds now the cesar i'm probably saying that wrong i'm hoping i'm not is 10 minutes and 54 seconds there are four sections in that song and this is one of those songs that has many different transitions of course the huge transition from one piece to another piece because there's only there's four in this 10 minute track almost clocking in at 11 minutes and i really enjoyed this track i think more than the first couple of tracks coming up leading up to it as it's track number four because not only is this track longer and it gives you it gives them more of a freedom to do more things, but because it's just that these transitions are kind of epic and there's like these moments where it's like this epic vibe, like something big is gonna happen and it does eventually come and it does hit you. And so I really think that that's a good thing because we have these shorter tracks kind of opening the album. We have track four that has four different kind of song ideas into one big track. And so you get to see the first couple of the first couple tracks to see how they're going to handle with this type of this element, this kind of idea about bronze sister and all these other things they're trying to throw into this album with these shorter tracks. But then you get to see what they're going to do with a longer song. So I like that. Uh, let's continue on here. When I open back up the iPhone, uh, the actual song Crack the Sky, which features Scott Kelly, which has actually been, he's actually done a guest vocals on every album, not mentioned it. I think I might have mentioned it before, but he actually did vocals on the actual song Crack the Sky, which is Clocks Minute, 5 minutes and 54 seconds. And uh, I really enjoyed his vocals in there. I like the lyrical content because that song really focuses around, obviously, the person Sky. So the lyrical content's kind of focused around her death and all these other things. So that was an interesting track to listen to. I felt really um, you know, pulled into that track to listen to more of what that track's going to deliver to me. And, of course, The Last Baron, which is 13 minutes, ending, closing the album. And that's kind of cool how they close the album with a long track instead of, like, a short track or something like that. They kind of just end on a big note, a big 13-minute closer, the longest track on the album, just to give you one big bang to go off with. And so that was awesome to see that how they're just going to throw it in a 13-minute track, and, you know, that's what we're going to do. So let's talk about the personnel and talk about, actually, the production and all that stuff because... You know, I spent a lot of time talking about the actual sky element, but that was a big thing that I really focused on. So let's actually talk about the actual guys. I'm going to go in order as it's listed on here. So I'm not going to go in order like I've always done. So the first person I'm going to mention, of course, is Braun, the drummer, because this album does focus around his sister. And so it makes sense of why he's put up first. He does drums, percussion, lead vocals on the song Oblivion, which I already talked about. Let's talk about his drums real quick, and then I'll talk about his vocals. So his drumming technique is back once again, the jazzy, groovy. That was a lot. That was a word I kept seeing around his uh, drum style was jazzy, groovy. And the, the drum fills are there. There are some moments where he's kind of pulled back in a sense in some sections, of course, where the whole band's pulled back. But you can just kind of tell maybe that he was trying to make sure that this was the best drumming he did on an album, regardless of if it's 100 miles per hour or just keeping a groove or you know keeping beat or doing whatever. I felt like that he was more focused on trying to come up with the best drum parts for every section. Not saying the past albums he hasn't, but this is an album that he really has to come up with the best things possible drumming-wise because this album is homage to his sister, so... It makes sense of how that's gonna how, how he probably came up with that. I bet this this album drum, uh, tracking drums was probably a little bit more intense, probably more emotional and probably emotion driven to come up with those best drum parts. So he did an amazing job. The drums sound amazing. His vocals on Oblivion are very good, and I really enjoyed his voice and I really like the lyrical content that he was delivering on that track and so I hope to see more of him maybe singing on a song in the hunter and maybe the new album which is supposedly supposed to come out in 2014 let's continue on with Brent Hines or Brent in general lead vocals and guitar Brent 
the guitars did amazing. There's another guitar player in my store as well. Bill, Bill and Brent on guitars. Let's talk about them first. Then we'll go back to the vocals of Brent and Troy, the bassist. And then we'll talk about the bass, then we'll be done. Anyways, Brent and Bill on guitars. Let's go back to that. The guitar sound on this album reminds me a lot of Leviathan, the 2004 release. Not so much 2006 uh, Blood Mountain, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing that they went backwards, but it just reminded me more of the Leviathan album, which I feel like is either tied for Blood Mountain, but that's my favorite. But I love the guitar tone they picked. It was very sludge type progressive, like it fit both those realms. And it also fit the more pulled back melodic or the acoustic guitars or the... You know, are the clean tone guitars so I really enjoyed the fact that there was a lot of different riffs going on here and there the lead playing wise the solos were crazy and they really got in your face and when the solos came they were right up front they were hitting you in the face and when the rhythm section was kind of when the rhythm guitars were really pushing and trying to you know push a, a song forward or trying to help a transition you always felt that the crunch or the heaviness or whatever they're trying to do you always felt that there was definitely some you know, thought out of how they're going to write the riffs, how they're going to put them together and how these songs are going to be put together playing the guitar wise. And so props to both of them. And, uh, let's go to the vocals for Bill and Troy, no, not Bill, sorry, Brent. I'm compl I'm really sorry. Brent and Troy on vocals. They both did an amazing job. They both have great vocals. Also Braun as well, who did vocals on oblivion. The vocals were amazing. I felt like everybody had a more of a, melody groove type vocals and i was mentioning that in blood mountain because i felt like that ever since remission even in leviathan a little bit they were going for more of a melody vocals in places of course there's the harsh vocals from all of them but there's also more of a melody driven vocals where they're trying to be more melodic in their vocals and then they're not trying so hard to be so harsh they're actually trying to sing melody and stuff like that so i gotta give props to them for doing that and the lyrical content on this album the actual lyrics, I feel like, were great because they really fit the kind of idea they're trying to do for this album, and it really pushed the kind of idea they're trying to get across forward, and they really got to me in many different ways, so I gotta give props to that because a lot of the times lyrical content doesn't get to me on some emotions or something like that, but the lyrics on this album, however, some of them do, and so I gotta give props to that, but great vocals for them, and let's talk about Troy to end on bass. The bass guitar, once again, is loud. It's in your face. It's not overdubbed by the guitars. So I got to give props to Troy. I mean, once again, he's doing some great stuff here. And he's really, you know, he plays the guitar sometimes. And sometimes he's not because, you know, you got to switch it up. You got to get at the other element where something else is happening. So there's more things to listen to than just, you know, this riff, 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 riff. And the bass is following. The bass can do something else to give something different. So props to that. So overall, Crack the Sky, I think, is an amazing, amazing release. It's got a lot of great things going for it. Lyrical content, the actual music, the actual meaning behind it about the actual girl sky who was bronze sister who committed suicide age 14 i felt like that piece of information really made me look at this album differently so i got to give props to this band for coming up with i think another amazing release and i'm now excited to see what the hunter the next album is going to do and of course the new album so crack the sky in my personal opinion is definitely a 9.5 out of 10 this is an amazing 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 release please check it out if you haven't already so uh that's the review guys thank you guys for watching if you like me and you want to see more click my name or like the video and subscribe to see more thank you guys for watching see ya